Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64academy.com and F64elite.com. And today I'm gonna to talk about the quick mask. Now you might already know how to create a quick mask in Photoshop because it's relatively uh, common knowledge. However, did you know that you can change the color of your quick mask? Aha, that's where the pro tip comes in. Let's go and hop into Photoshop and I'll show you how to change the color of your quick mask. Okay, so let's start from the ground zero level. Maybe you don't know what a quick mask is. I'm gonna introduce you to that first. Then I'm gonna show you why you might wanna change the color of that quick mask and then compare it to one of my other favorite ways to look at a mask on a photograph. So this tutorial is gonna be stacked with some pretty valuable information. All right, so this is my city, Kansas City. Love my city. This is all lit up with the night sky here just after the parade for the Kansas City Chiefs win, yes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you where this quick mask comes in. Okay, so if I put a curves adjustment layer on here and I modify this curve, you know, just do something like this and then something like this. And let's say I like what's happening in the sky, but I don't like what's happening in the foreground. Well, what would I do? I would click on my mask, press B for my brush tool, make my brush a little bit larger, and then switch over to the color black. And then I would start painting on this mask with the color black so that this area does not get that really harsh curve. Now that's all fine and well, I'm painting on here and I can visually see what's happening. But if I press the forward slash key, which is right next to the enter button, that shows me exactly what I have masked already. And this is called a quick mask. It's showing me in red what is not being affected on my image. So as I brush this, this is in red, this is the area that is not going to be receiving this curves adjustment layer. So as I brush this and brush this on, I can see that I'm not going to be affecting this, but it's in red and it's in red so that you can just visually see a little bit better than just trying to guess by just painting on your image. So if I press that forward slash key again, it goes away. That's called a quick mask it quickly goes into a veil of color just this veil of color of red to show me what i have painted away from my photograph okay so i'll press that forward slash key again you can see that this curves adjustment layer is only affecting that background layer press that quick mask key and you can see the mask that i just created so the mask that i created is going to be in red so let's flip over to this photograph now this is a photograph that i've already done quite a bit of work on here and I'm gonna to go to an area where I have a mask. So let's say this curves adjustment layer right here. I've got a mask on here. So if I press the forward slash key on here, it's gonna give me that veil of red. And that's great, but if my image is predominantly red, like this one is, I have a problem, don't I? So this is where we might want to change the color of our quick mask. And it's not the most intuitive thing, actually. So right now it's showing up in red. If I want to change the color of the quick mask, I have to hop over to the channels area here. If you don't have channels in next to your layers palette, go to window and go to channels. Okay. So I'm going to go over to the channels palette here. And in the channels palette, I have to click on a physical mask here somewhere. So this is showing me that that's the curves Two mask. Now, in order to change the color, I have to go up here into layer mask options. You see that layer mask options. So we click on a mask and then click layer mask options. Now here, I'm going to change the color. Right now you can see that the default might be at something between 35 and 50%. I'm actually going to put this at like maybe 75% to make it brighter, number one. And then I'm also gonna click on this and make it magenta. And to make it pure magenta, I'm gonna go 255, zero, and 255. So red 255, green zero, and blue 255 is the color for magenta, and press okay. And why magenta? Well, I use magenta all the time for my color overlay layers, and that's because magenta is, an, is a color that we typically don't see in our photographs unless we're photographing magenta flowers, which isn't as often as maybe things like the color red as you can see here. So once I press OK, now you can see visually much better and much stronger, actually, the areas of where this mask is actually taking place. OK, so if I press that forward slash key, you can see here it's much easier for me to mask on here now and paint things away. I can see this area here needs to be painted away, so I'll start painting away right here. And it's going to get more close to the actual color magenta as I paint on here rather than uh, just having that slight veil there because we changed this from that 35% to 75%. And then if we press that forward slash key, we've got our mask dialed in. So the quick mask forward slash, we can see exactly where we have painted our mask. 
Now this quick mask is not a permanent thing, okay? The quick mask is just a way to show you the areas that you have painted on your mask and to show you an individual representation. Now clearly if you're over in your layers pile and you press alt or option and you click on that mask, you can see that too. But what you can't see from this mask here is any of the area that's underneath it. Like we can when we have the quick mask up because we can still see something underneath. So we get a visual display of what's underneath. Now that opacity that's on that, that quick mask, when we go here to the layer options, I had mine set to 75%. Let's change it to something like 60%. Press OK. It gives us a better visualization of what's underneath as we're making that mask. Now, there is another way that you've seen me do this before. In other tutorials, I've showed you that if you want to see exactly what this area is affecting, which is opposite of the quick mask, we can double click on this. And then in the layer styles, we're going to click on color overlay. And that color overlay, I'm going to make a very strong magenta, 255 red, 255 blue. Okay. Opacity at 100%. And then press OK. Now, this is different. This isn't a quick mask. This, this is a color overlay that just fills in the areas that actually is affecting the photograph, which is opposite and reverse of a quick mask. One of the reasons why I really like this method is because I can see what this layer is affecting and not necessarily what is masked out. But I can also, if I double click on this and I use blend if, I can also see where the blend if is affecting my photograph, okay? And once I press okay on that, if I turn this color overlay off and then hit the quick mask, I can't see where that blend if has hit. So this quick mask option is only tied to the actual mask, whereas the color overlay shows you what's visible and what's not masked out. And also because it's showing you what's visible, it's also giving you a representation of what your blend if might be. So which way is better? It really depends on what you're working on. A lot of times if I'm working on an image like this, I just need a really quick mask really quickly. Now this quick mask that we see here has not been set yet. So we're going to go and set this to layer mask options, change this to that magenta color, 255, press OK, and then 60%, press OK. And you can see how we can even see that much better on this photograph here. Now these settings will stick. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to close this image. No, I don't want to save it. I'm going to go file, save as I'm going to save this to my desktop here, and I'm going to hop back into Photoshop. So you can see that these, these settings will stick. Okay. And then when we open up another image, they'll stick to that image as well. All right. So I'm back in Photoshop. I just reloaded it real quick and that setting did stick. If I open up a new photo and put this up here, clear my guides, control H, I'm going to make a new mask just to make sure that these settings did stick and press the quick mask option here after I brush on with black and these settings did stick. Okay. So once you have set that layer mask options, it will stick once you uh, reset Photoshop and turn it off and turn it back on until you go into your channels and to your layer mask options and change that back to red. If you wanted to, I highly recommend magenta because it's a color that you're not going to see in most of your photographs. So key takeaways here, the quick mask is a great way to see what you're actually masking away in any given layer. It's not the same as doing that color overlay technique that you may have seen me use in the past. The color overlay technique shows you what is actually being affected within that layer and not what's being masked away from that layer. So those are two things that I need to make a differentiation on because you've probably seen me do both of these at any given time. And I wanted to show you the difference between the two. I highly recommend using a magenta mask at about 60% because it's a lot easier to see that quick mask with the color magenta on there. Again, the quick mask is a temporary thing. You press that forward slash key and it goes away. It's just there to give you a really quick representation of what that mask is. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64academy.com and F64elite.com. If you like this, please comment on it, share it and tell a friend. I hope you learned something new today because I know that I've been working in Photoshop for like 20 some years and I did not know that I could change the color of the quick mask until I started digging really deep into different areas in Photoshop. Thanks very much for taking time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.